What we're going to start with is uh, talking about some of the good, bad, and uh, major concerns about globalization and how it's affecting, essentially, our whole environment. Uh, the reality is that uh, we've heard about it for decades, that uh, globalization is coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and if you have participated at all in the last 10 years, uh, you realize that everything in the way we live, work, and play is actually changed, but a lot of the ways that we do things haven't. So the reality is, is that uh, as these things are changing, our world keeps getting smaller, and yes, smaller yet. But the way we're going about things is not changing a whole lot. Uh, the reality is that we can go online these days and we can pretty much buy anything we want to buy. Uh, and so can our cats. Uh, but the reality is, you know, and then basically it arrives the next day. So there's a sense of immediacy. But that sense of immediacy is also producing a certain amount of addiction, too. Uh, you know, can't take my hand off the mouse. It's like, where did the day go by? I don't know. You know, I'll order something else. It'll come tomorrow. It's magical. Uh, and so we really have to watch out how that's moving. Uh, the fact is that we can virtually go any place we want to. We can go to these travel lands, you can virtually go to museums that you always wanted to go to, and all that sort of business out there. But the reality is, we're not really there, okay? So there's a certain sort of question. There's a nice sense of the virtual, the fact that it can, you know, lead you on to another level. But at the same time, physically, we're not really there. And that sense of delusion. Uh, we can create, uh, essentially have virtual relationships, and we can create avatars, we can basically become anybody we want to become, we can have people perceive us however we want, uh, we can investigate these virtual worlds, but the fact is, there's a certain sort of sense of, hmm, denial. Are we really in the world, okay? Uh, now, the woman on the, on, you know, on the uh, right, uh, she's definitely in the world, she can feel that. Uh, but, you know, we're certainly experiencing a lot of different synthetics. And how is that affecting our emotions? What we see, what we feel, what we experience in the world, um, is it sort of causing or can it cause a sort of desensitizing uh, effect? Now, certainly, if you're spending a lot of time at the computer, you know, and wonderful boxes, they let us do things that we've not been able to do before, gain information from places faster, communicate ways that are really exciting and really interesting, and at the same time, you know, we feel the sort of cost of it. And about the only person in this situation, you know, that's basically, um, I would say, doing a good job is our massage therapist that says, you know, you need to stop doing this. Now, the fact is, we need to ask, you know, why should we step outside? Because if we can basically sit down at our computer, we can go every place, we can shop every place, we can essentially become anybody we want to become, why do we need to go outside and find a release? How do we make contact with the actual, you know, rest of humanity? Basically, I am a spatial experience designer. And what I really believe is that we as designers need to step up and really show how the built environment can be pushed to another level. In the same way that we've gotten this more accessibility in our lives, is that how do we enhance engagement in everything that we design? Essentially, whether we're talking about shopping and eating and drinking and sleeping and working and playing, Basically, we need to look at how do we make those experiences more interesting, okay? Because otherwise, there is no reason to get off your chair and go do something, okay? What's the fact? It arrives at your doorstep. It's there the next day. So there's got to be motivation. There's got to be a seductive atmosphere that basically is going to take you someplace else. Sorry to show you these pictures when you have lunch coming up. Uh, essentially, uh, stories need to be more than stuff on shelves, okay? The fact is that if there's no sense of surprise, I might as well sit there on Amazon, have a prime customer, and it shows up on my doorstep, okay? If I'm going to actually go out there, I want to be surprised. I want interest. I want to be seduced in a way that I haven't before, okay? Destination. Hotels cannot just be beds. 
Okay? You really have to think about the fact is I've arrived. This is interesting. I'm moving across that public space. I'm checking in. I'm meeting people. I'm going up to a, into the elevator. I'm coming up to the floor. It opens. You know, here's the interesting experience. I'm moving across. I open my room. And in the case of, say, the Standard Hotel in New York, you look across the glazing. You see the water. You see the Statue of Liberty. It's an amazing place. And you think to yourself, this is pretty interesting. You know, this is nice. I got to tell somebody about this. This is something worthwhile. And essentially, the workplace can no longer be someplace, essentially, that we don't, you know, we can't wait to leave, okay? Because the fact is that if we're not building collaboration, okay, if we're really not talking to people and having them share sincere ideas, working with each other, trying to work things out to another level, the reality is you have people trying to do as little as possible, make as much as possible, and then basically get out and do something else. And so that when you're building a company or you're building a brand or you're building a situation or you're building an environment, unless you've got buy-in from everybody and you're really talking, it can't be top-down design or top-down organization. It really has to be able to look at, in most equations, when things are being designed, there's one thing that's missing most most of the time, the people. Who are you trying to address? Are you making meaningful impact? And that gets lost a large portion of the time. Okay, we're seeing changes. And as we saw with the ice cream, you know, the ice cream truck, and at this point in time, bacon ice cream sounds really good. Uh, we're seeing a lot of tra trending changes, things like slow retail, slow food, uh, workplaces that work and play. People's expectations, there's a certain sense of, you know, maybe, you know, this new stuff is really nice and interesting and really seductive, but maybe I'm missing a little bit of something. Okay. We're all here <laughs> many, many, many times uh, wondering if this notion of faster and better connected uh, is really bringing us more. The notion that it is certainly bringing us more text messages asking us, why didn't you respond three minutes earlier to the phone message that I left you that was three minutes before the email that I said to you, and that's coming from the other side of the world. So there's a certain sort of exhaustion with that to where, okay, I'm pedaling as fast as I can, and I still am behind, okay? So there's got to be a look at, you know, how do we benefit from all this that we're learning, and how do we put it to use in a way that's going to have a really positive effect? And I think with that, we sort of have to start reinvestigating. Essentially, you know, where is our depth in experiences? Where do we find sensitivity? How can we sort of say, what is it that leaves a lasting impression? Okay? The idea of nuance. Okay, the idea of in a faster, faster world that things are speeding by, how do you pull that down? Look at something that's been pared down, incredibly refined, the tactility of it, the sensorial experience to where there is a sense of either elegance or interest or shape and form. That sense of nuance just gets you intrigued and you say to yourself, you know what, this is, this is pretty interesting. This is, you know, this is really exceptional. And, you know, can you stop long enough to notice it? Or are you speeding right by it and don't even see that it's going on? Essentially, that impression, that sense of something that does leave a lasting impression that you're willing to share. You're sharing it either with your kids, your friends, your family. Are you taking a moment to take a breath and say, you know what, there is more to it. You know, it's like if I'm building up momentum, and we all do it, we're trying to move faster and faster because we think if we move faster, we'll catch up and there'll be more space. And the fact is, we just move faster. So rather than trying to turn the clock back, and that's the other thing that you hear over and over again, is that the normal way would be to, well, I'm not sure that I like the way things are now, so I'll go back to a time when it was so much more comfortable. And the reality is, uh, you can't, because we have changed a lot of the ways that things fit together, okay? People are not gonna throw away their connectivity. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, so we have to look through this new world through new filters. There's got to be a way to do it. And to do that, first, we have to look at that when we're developing, whether it's a project, a space, a store, a workplace, we've got to stop thinking about how much 
we are spending. Now, I know those of you who might be bean counters in the audience, that's like anarchy. Um, but the reality is, is that we really have to look at, of course, what we're investing in. Because if you're working for a brand, you're working for an individual, um, no matter on what side of the pyramid, the reality is, you know, are you in fact investing in the right stuff? How are you making that work? How do you make those connections to where it's truly, truly an interesting situation? Okay, and so we need to basically stop following the way it's always been done. How many times if you're a designer or an architect, you're doing a project and somebody comes to you and says, well, this is the way we've always done it. And you know, and you go, well, yeah, but that's gonna compromise the whole project. It's gonna ruin the thing and the actual impact that you've spent months and months and months and months designing is gonna be out the door, okay? So we really need to ask ourselves, how can we in fact create more impact and meaning so we have to refresh the way we do things? Not throw out the baby with the bathwater, but sort of say, reevaluate. how do we refresh what we do? Linking. Very important. Again, if we're not linking to the people that we're talking about, if we're designing for the top of the pyramid and in a very, very, very exclusive brand, we know, you know what their history is, where they've had their impact. But we also need to be visionary enough to say where they need to go. Otherwise, quite honestly, they'll be out of business just like everybody else will. So how are we going to make them move forward? On the other hand, if we're designing for the other side of the pyramid, how do we listen to what needs to be done there? Okay, the reality is that the same thought system, the same notion of being able to look at your research, really understand interesting conclusions, and look for design options, not answers, is where this all lies. We need to start looking for systems that basically stops and looking for systems that always apply. Again, systematic approach. Uh, you see a lot of different design systems even these days. It's like a whole sheet of boxes. First you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, and it guarantees an outcome. I think to myself, there's nobody living and breathing, there's no blood running through that, and the fact is, is that what we do is all about exception. We need to stop basically letting our egos make trophy-driven decisions, okay? The thing about like building towers, I built a tower. No, no, my, my world is gonna build a bigger tower. My city is gonna build another tower. You know what, my tower is even bigger than your tower. And the fact is, most of these things are sitting empty and there's people down on the street that don't have a place to live or food to eat. So the imbalance of that is just totally out of this world. It's just crazy. So when it comes down to it, the real connection is really people. And it's interesting is that I think historically, as we've gone from the you know, sort of industrial revolution, this notion of becoming more and more professional and making more and more connections with more and more professionals, we've stopped talking to the people we're supposed to be designing for. So we need to basically look at situations. We always talk about it looking from the first moment of encounter to the last moment of interaction. That means everything that goes on. It's not one piece of it, it's absolutely everything. Just like essentially you're looking at great ingredients, you're trying to pull the best of the possible things together, it still doesn't guarantee a good outcome, but Certainly thinking about how that thing is conceived, how it's put together, how it's plated, how it's presented, and essentially the care that goes into the whole process is where the magic comes in, the sensitivity to the situation. Essentially memories. We feel, we you know, what we experience, what we remember. It helps us to find who we are, okay, and where we've been and what we remember, memories that we hold dear. The fact is it might sound corny a lot of the times, but essentially those memories are incredibly important. They impact what it goes on. So essentially, uh, the creative process is alchemy. It's magic. It is basically, it can have an amazing impact beyond you know, the expected. We have to push ourselves beyond the predictable and beyond the formula. But the reality is, if we are 
the creatives that we say we are, and we're out there promoting ourselves, and we're showing our portfolios, and we're talking to people. We need to go big, or we need to stay home, the reality is, because that is looking and seeking opportunities in a shrinking world. Thank you.